Good evening. This is Ben with Wild Last Frontier. And today I've got a different sort of video that I want to do. Um, it's a little quicker and easier for me, at least, than some of my others. But uh, pretty much all I'm going to do today is talk and make some coffee. Speaking of, water's already hot. It's taken several takes to film this because I kept tripping over my words. But anyway, today what I want to talk about is the relativity of temperature and how humans are able to adapt to their climate. I would say better than any other animal, but uh, I don't have the scientific basis to back that up. But it is currently 14 degrees above zero where I'm at in Alaska right now which to some people sounds like a frozen hellscape that they'll never want to go to. But considering the fact that two, three days ago, it was negative 37 degrees Fahrenheit in the same location. The relative temperature difference, let's see, 37, 47, almost, let's see, 51 degrees? 51 degree difference in temperature changed over the span of about three or four days. One, it's mind boggling that that happens up here. It happens fairly frequently, actually. It's not as uncommon as some people might think for it to jump above and below zero all over the place. But what are the effects? The effects of the temperature change. Well, for starters, here I am without gloves. All I've got on is a hat, sweatshirt, jacket, t-shirt, sweatpants, socks, and moccasins. Uh, if I had been wearing this three, four days ago, I would be absolutely miserable. Borderline risking cold weather injury and it would just constantly be shivering my hands wouldn't work my face wouldn't <laughs> my, my, my face would freeze up to the point where it'd be hard to speak um, at temperatures like that if you're not properly dressed it can affect your uh, how to say it like your your mental cognition, particularly if you start getting into the realm of hypothermia. But just even being out and about in that cold without having the proper equipment or the proper gear, it changes your mindset. Makes everything, everything, down to breathing, just that much more miserable. Right now, dressed basically in pajamas with a light jacket i'm not only doing all right i'm actually fairly comfortable so how does that take how does that play into bushcraft outdoor skills um and and just humanity in general well, first of all, if there is a warm spell like this when you are out and about in the woods or in the outdoors, take advantage of it. Uh, everything from boiling, starting water to boiling a fire. How about a little director's commentary here? I meant starting a fire and boiling water, not starting water and boiling a fire. Thank you. To going to the bathroom, everything that you do in a cold weather environment anyway, gets easier when it gets warm, it gets harder when it gets cold. So take advantage of warm temperatures when you can. 
That's not to say you stop doing any sort of outdoor skills or outdoor work whenever it's not cold or whenever it's not warm. But if you're able to maximize your work output during a warm spell, you can do things that'll make you more comfortable during the next cold spell. Let's see, what else? <clears throat> I am uh, constantly surprised by the human body's ability to adapt and the fact that, you know, several months ago, it was extremely warm, at least by Alaskan standards. There were times during the summer where it was 80, 90 degrees. Some people don't understand it yet, so those temperatures up here in the summer. And then going from 80, 90 degrees in the summer to negative 30, negative 40 in the winter, over the span of several months, it builds up a tolerance, but in places of extreme conditions like Alaska, it's a much faster progression than it is in, in other places. I think it went from hovering around the 30s, above zero, no snow on the ground, to sticking with the teens and never getting back above 30 over the span of about a week and a half, two weeks. And of course, there's always the fluctuation of, of going up and down throughout the winter. But uh, when the cold hits, it sticks and it stays up here. So it, generally speaking, doesn't give you as much time to acclimate. But once you've been in that cold for a while, and you're used to doing things outside and you're not spending every second indoor in your house or in a heated vehicle. If you're actually out and about in those temperatures, properly dressed, mind you, um, you start to acclimate fairly well. And I've talked to several people and they say, oh yeah, negative 40. It felt like negative 20, I just didn't want to stay outside as long. Once you hit a certain point in cold temperature, it all just kind of feels the same, but makes you miserable faster. That being said, once you are able to acclimate, and you have acclimated to those extreme cold temperatures, minus 25, minus 30, minus 40 degrees, when a warm spell comes along and it's 14, 15 degrees above, it just, it feels like an absolute blessing. <sighs> and like, not even to the point where it's just less miserable, but it's actually comfortable. Yes, I have a campfire here, but when I was walking my dogs earlier, I had about half of the layers on that I normally have during the winter up here, and I was still getting a little too warm. So understanding how you operate at different temperatures is very important. Practicing your skills in different temperatures is very important. It's all fine and dandy to go build a cool shelter or start a fire or, you know, do some outdoor skill when it's 75 and partly cloudy. But uh, you've got to also practice them when it's not ideal, in high wind conditions, in the rain, in the snow, in extreme cold weather temperatures. All that being said, though, it is very nice to be able to just relax and have a, quote, easy time of it at a at an absolutely tropical temperature of 14 degrees above zero. You can see right here my 
might not show up on the camera, but just by being next to the fire, my moccasins are steaming out all, all of the moisture. Other than maybe the very tips of my toes, my entire body, even the parts that are not facing the fire, feel warm. Not, not just comfortably cold, feel warm. So yeah, I'm not really sure where this is going. It's just me talking to a campfire, but it's very interesting. And I think it's important that other people do it as well, is adapt your body to extreme temperatures, be it heat or cold, safely. Um, but then just see what you can do. And in those rough conditions, it sucks. It really does sometimes. Like checking my snares when it was minus 35 degrees. I didn't want to do it, but I still did it because it's the right thing to do. But also to show that I could and to show myself that I could. Nobody else. But now that it's 14 degrees above zero, I'm thinking back on that negative 35 degree walk through the woods to look at my traps. I'm thinking, man, it would have been so much easier to do it at this temperature. And for perspective, other people can do the exact same acclimation process in hot weather. Like if I, if I stepped into even a, even an air conditioned room, it was 80 degrees, I'd be <laughs> at risk for heat stroke. But there are other people out there that can, that can endure the extreme hot temperatures as well, which I find is personally much more difficult. Because you can always put on more layers or huddle up next to a fire, but you can only take so many off. Cold weather survival, cold weather bushcraft, cold weather recreation is very fun and challenging and rewarding. I honestly think that hot weather survival, bushcraft, and recreation is just, it's nuts to me. I can't even imagine. I've, I've been places like Nevada, New Mexico, where it's 120 degrees in the shade just miserable even after i was acclimated just miserable and some people can do it way better than i can tons of respect to people who do hot weather hot weather survival challenges or hot weather recreational sports or you know Go grocery shopping where the sidewalks will melt the soles off your sneakers. Uh -uh. uh It's amazing. It's amazing what the human body can tolerate. Well, either way, it probably sounds like a long-winded, stupid rant. Not even really a rant, more of a crazy old coot talking to himself around a campfire, <laughs> screaming my opinions into the void, but I'm going to finish my coffee, enjoy this fire, <laughs> thank, thank my lucky stars for this, uh, this tropical breeze that brought it up to 14 above and plan what I want to do the next time it gets really cold in order to challenge myself. Thanks for watching.